Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So, um, every now and again I buy uh, knives and other products, so I decided I may as well do some reviews of some of these for my uh, YouTube channel for your benefit, hopefully, uh, and hopefully it'll be of interest and use to some of you. Um, so, I bought a couple of knives recently from uh, a British company called Blades and Bows. I'll put a link below this video. Um, I have to say, I've got excellent service from them. Uh, very, very good, quick, easy website to use. Um, they've got uh, a wide variety of stock, at very reasonable prices, and um, they gave me updates on the postage uh, all along the way. They arrived very promptly, um, uh, exactly when they said they would, uh, well packaged, and so on and so forth. So I recommend that company highly. Um, as I mentioned, I'll put a link below the video here. So uh, the first product I want to talk about um, is a Bowie knife. Um, as viewers of my channel will know, I have a, a penchant for all things uh, 19th century and uh, that includes Bowie knives. Uh, because I um, collect antique weapons and buy and sell a few antique weapons, I do get to uh, see and handle uh, original antique Bowie knives from time to time. So I've got a fairly good idea of um, the original 19th century uh, Bowie knives and, and their characteristics and, and designs and types and so on. Um, and whenever I see, I have, a, I have a real weakness for coffin handled bowies and whenever I see one, uh, even if it's a modern, uh, a modern sort of take on the design, uh, I, can't resist, uh, I can't resist buying it if I can afford it at the time. Um, and I noticed that uh, the company Elk Ridge, uh, who I understand are a budget make, uh, they're based, based in China, um, fairly, fairly sort of, um, fairly budget economy uh, makers of knives. Um, but I hadn't, I'd seen their stuff before but I hadn't owned any of it before and I thought it looked okay quality and I noticed for the first time that they do a uh, coffin handle bowie so I thought I'll have that um, and I ordered it from um, uh, Blades and Bows and uh, got it in a few days and uh, uh, this video is just to have a look at that and give you some of my first impressions of the knife so it arrives in a box uh, with uh, Elk Ridge, the, the maker's uh, design and name on the front. One thing I note, it, note about Elk Ridge is they're a Chinese company and I, I guess they don't necessarily know what an elk is uh, because they have a, a deer uh, over a mountain for their logo and of course an elk is, uh, certainly in Europe anyway, an elk is kind of like a moose. Uh, it's not really a deer. But anyway, that aside, um, fine box, nothing, nothing fancy about it, no real uh, packaging inside it apart from pretty much an empty box but that's fine, that's good enough for, for this kind of level of product I think. There is a silicon gel um, uh, um, a sort of moisture resistant thing in there uh, should you need it, although of course um, Elk Ridge do make uh, stainless steel blades so it's um, not that important uh, but nevertheless it's good not to have damp in your products. Um, and I should mention at this point that uh, it seems to me from my uh, the low level of research that Elk Ridge's blades are all uh, a, a Chinese form of 440 stainless, at least it says 440 stainless on the blades. And I do understand that different countries have different um, sort of uh, standards for measuring different types of steel. Um, they don't say whether it's 440C or 440 something else. Um, but anyway, it's some form of stainless steel. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the blade uh, as we look at it. So there is the knife as it comes out of the box. Uh, first impressions are that the, the scabbard um, looks a bit kind of economy, but you know, this is a product which uh, from uh, Blades and Bows costs, um, costs £22.99, so it's not, it's not by any stretch an expensive knife. It's a very cheap, uh, cheap knife, so we don't necessarily expect a very expensive scabbard. However, you know, it's not badly constructed. Um, for, a, for a sort of uh, fabric, synthetic scabbard, it's, um, it's actually a little bit more sturdy than I expected. It's got some kind of stiffener in there. Um, so it's, it's a little bit more sturdy than I expected from the pictures, but I knew I wasn't going to get a fancy scabbard because, of course, the pictures show, uh, show you what kind of um, scabbard you're getting. Um, if we uh, take, so it's got a Velcro strap to keep the, um, 
keep it in its scabbard safely. should mention it's got a belt loop there, fairly simple, fairly bog standard, nothing exciting about it. It doesn't really have any reinforcement at the tip and I think if you were if you were going to use this uh, out in the field or, or you know for hunting or just um, sort of camping you, uh, use you might be a little bit concerned about the fact that the point of this knife which is really quite pointy and sharp might possibly push through the side of that scabbard so I think you might if you were going to use it regularly you might want to either replace the scabbard or put a, a sturdier tip um, on the scabbard there okay so drawing it out here we go we've got a pretty nicely shaped coffin handle bowie and the coffin handle there let's just have a look at that it's made uh, quite thick you see it's a full width uh, full length tang as you pretty much always get with a coffin handle bowie uh, which is one of the things I like about them it's a very strong design uh, characteristic coffin handle shape and you'll see that it's made of on each side three segments of wood each of which are held by a number of rivets. Four rivets in the pommel cap, four in the middle, and two in this final bit that's just below the guard. Okay, and they are brass rivets that go all the way through the tang, I presume. Uh, so very secure fitting, and the wood is quite nice, it's quite pleasing to the eye. The dark wood is perhaps some kind of rosewood. Uh, I don't know what the uh, kind of reddish coloured wood in the middle is, but it's got a nice grain on it, it's quite attractive. And I would mention that the grip is quite thick. I actually like this because the way that I hold this kind of bowie is in a sabre grip with the thumb up the back and you'll see there that it means that you've got quite a broad flat surface on which to place your thumb so if you're actually using the bowie in a, in a sort of fighting uh, sense or indeed if you're just carving something it does give you a nice solid platform at the back of the grip there just under the guard to place your thumb and it's not going to roll off or slip off the side so it's actually quite a nice grip for all sorts of purposes and it does sit in the hand quite comfortably the end of the coffin uh, there the coffin grip kind of sits in the palm of your hand very comfortably very securely some of these um, coffin handle bowies the grips are made too large uh, so too large for my tastes at least um, and the result of that is you feel like you're kind of stretching your hand around the grip and you, you're not holding it very securely. This for me is just about the right size actually, it's a really nice, really nice size, fits perfectly in my hand and it's quite comparable with the uh, diameter and um, sort of circumference of grips I like on a sabre, on an actual sword. Okay, so uh, considering the Bowie as a kind of mini sabre, it actually fits for me really quite well. Okay, moving up to the guard. Um, the guard is basic, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. Um, I would say it's perhaps a little bit more angular than it should be. It's very clearly, if I just put it very close to the camera there, it's very clearly cut out um, on straight lines. And I would say aesthetically that would be much nicer if those uh, points were just kind of rounded and a bit curved. It looks, the guard looks a little bit cheap, but let's face it, this is, this is a 20 something pound knife, okay? Um, it, is, it, is, it is an economy bowie knife, so we can't expect too much. And the one thing I would say is that both the grip and the guard, and indeed the blade to some extent on this, do offer the chance for playing around, tinkering and modification on your own. It's not an expensive piece, so if you want to spend 23 quid and practice some of your uh, DIY uh, knife making or knife modification skills, um, then this might be a good piece to have a play with and that guard could definitely be improved. I should also mention that because of the way that the grip is attached with these rivets you could in fact uh, either push or drill out those rivets and replace the grip slabs with something like bone or horn or, um, or antler or something that you preferred or a nicer wood ebony or something, something like that. Um, whether the blade would be worth that level of effort, um, I can't comment that much yet. I have to say, it's, um, I'll move on to the blade now, it's, it's a nicely formed blade. It's not fantastically finished in that it does have um, sort of very fine grind lines on it, so it's not really been polished as such. I imagine it's made on a CNC machine, a milling machine. Um, but what I will say about it is, unlike lots of economy bowies, um, this is actually quite a light, thin blade, so it starts about kind of three or four millimetres at the base of the blade and has a distal taper throughout the length of the blade, ending up about probably about two millimetres thick near the tip, just before it actually narrows into the tip itself. 
Okay, so what you end up with is whilst it's a big blade, it is actually quite a light responsive blade. And it's actually quite similar in that sense to uh, some of the Hanway um, uh, Bowie knives, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, so the blade itself is pretty, pretty nicely made, um, but it could benefit from some better finishing. And you know what, you can get some um, very fine grit uh, sandpaper, such as wet and dry sandpaper, and you could uh, start working that surface down to be smoother and then put it on a buffing wheel. You could probably get a really, really nice finish on that blade. Although, of course, with any kind of polishing process, you want to be careful not to uh, overheat the blade because you'll remove any heat treatment that it has in it. On the subject of heat treatment, I, um, the only way that I've tested the edge of this so far is to re-sharpen it myself. When it arrived, it was sharp-ish, but it wasn't really, really sharp. Um, and uh, because of the grind, it's a, quite a fine wedge section. I knew it'd be quite quick, quick and easy to, to sharpen. So um, I got my uh, sharpening stone, which I usually use a um, DC4 uh, by Falcon even uh, DC4. Um, and uh, that's the pouch incidentally and the actual stone, let's just draw it out, the actual stone sits uh, inside there. I use this for a lot of uh, retouching of edges and you know just touching up edges that I've been using for cutting, whether it's test cutting or actually using it as a tool, this is a very useful thing to have and I have to be honest, I actually use this for most sharpening uh, and whilst I have larger whetstones, I, I often find that this gives just as good an edge. It takes time and it takes, it's taken a certain amount of practice to get the angles right with such a small stone. But I actually find now, for me, this works um, as well as, as um, big wet stones. But I'll talk about the DC4 in, a, in another video. So I, I touched up the edge of this and it seems relatively hard. Um, I haven't done a proper hardness test but it doesn't seem really soft. Um, stainless steel often is uh, relatively difficult, or I find quite hard to sharpen in comparison to carbon steel. Carbon steel generally for me sharpens um, to a finer edge more easily. Um, but, um, but it sharpened up, it's very sharp. Um, I did a test cut through a water bottle, thunk straight through, um, and uh, yeah, it sharpened fine and it sharpened well, it seems to hold a good edge. Um, as for the hardness, only time will tell. Maybe I'll come back and talk about it in a future video. Um, but uh, also in terms of the temper, I noticed that it has got some degree of blade flex. It doesn't stay doesn't stay bent when I bend the knife. So it has been it has been heat treated, but it's a fairly stiff blade. It's not very easy to flex it. Um, and uh, the other thing I would say about the shape of the actual blade is it has this uh, quite subtle sharpening, I don't know if you can catch it in the light there, on the false edge, on the back edge, uh, which is quite nice and is very similar to lots of original Bowie knife um, examples that you see. Um, and also the front edge has this quite nice kind of um, flowing line to it that's a little bit similar to the to the uh, overall curve you get on a, on a cookery, obviously much less curved than a cookery, but the fact that it bellies in and then bellies out again, it's, um, it's quite a nice, quite a pleasing shape. I, I have to say I wasn't expecting that. In the, from the pictures I thought it was a pretty much a straight edge, as most bowies are, uh, but that's quite a pleasing shape to me, I think it's quite nice. It's almost a, a bit like um, a sort of Sri, Sri Lankan Piaquetta type knife. Um, so there we go, the blade incidentally is just under 10 inches, it's about 9 and 3 quarter inches long and I, I, I reiterate, because I think it's important to mention, it's light, it's, it's, the Bowie as a whole is lighter than I expected it to be. Um, most low-end kind of cheap Bowie knives are overweight for what they are. Uh, they, they tend to put very thick steel blades with no distal taper at all. This has very noticeable distal taper, much like a, a more expensive Hanway incidentally. Um, so there we go. I think for, for the price, for the sort of £23 price that it is, it's, um, it's a really fun little Bowie. It's a small amount of money to pay for something that's actually fairly good. The finish on it is not fantastic, but you can improve that. You could do some DIY. Um, it seems functional. It seems like the steel is reasonable. Um, and, uh, and the grip, the grip is, I would say, one of the best features of it. It's pretty good grip, well finished, nice wood. The guard, I, I would like to see the guard improved uh, and maybe just those edges rounded a bit. It's a little bit sharp on the edges uh, and I'll probably go to it with a file at some point when I've got a spare five or ten minutes. 
But there we go, so the Elk Ridge coffin handle Bowie, I'll put a link to it and, uh, and the supplier's um, web address down below this video, but I hope that was of uh, some use. There we go, thank you.